This is the Sunday motivational video. Every Sunday, we bring you a different type of video which should improve your life. Today, we're looking at 15 Reasons Why Businesses Fail. This is Billionaire Mondays. Every Monday, we present you with another billionaire. Hello, Aluxers. It's great to have you here with us today, especially since this title was recommended by one of you. The Aluxers who choose to be supporters of the channel can vote and recommend titles we'll cover in upcoming videos. Many of you are starting businesses or are already running them. That's why the interest in increasing your chances of success is becoming a priority. It makes sense to study what others did wrong in the hopes of avoiding it yourself. That's where we come in. We put together a list of factors that impact why new companies never really get off the ground, as well as resources for you to look into the matter yourself. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. But let's get to it, shall we? Here are the 15 most common reasons why businesses fail. Number 1. No Competitive Advantage It all sounds cool and exciting. You're going to launch a business. You see them all around, so you think to yourself, why wouldn't I be a successful entrepreneur? I have plenty of ideas. I can figure this out. You borrow money from the three Fs, family, friends, and other fools, and open up a coffee shop on your street. Three months later, a brand new Starbucks pops up one block away from you and you don't think much of it. But less people are coming in. You try selling all kinds of things in the store just to supplement the income because your rent doesn't care that people want their frappuccinos, not your generic lattes. And in six months, you close it all down, losing money and putting a strain on your relationships. It's easy to blame your failure on the faceless corporations that are slowly taking over the world, when in reality, you had no differentiators. You were selling something people could have bought elsewhere. You didn't approach the issue in an innovative way. You didn't leverage new resources that others did. This is even more accelerated in the online space, where you're not only competing against the people in your area, you're competing against everyone in the world who's coming after your customers. Legendary CEO Jack Welch put it best when he said, If you don't have a competitive advantage, don't compete. We recommend you pick up his book called Winning, and as long as you're in business, reread it every 18 months. You could get an inside look at the 40-year lessons one of the most prominent CEOs of this century has learned and implemented himself. Better yet, go to alux.com slash freebook and sign up to get the audiobook version for free, thanks to our friends at Audible, if you prefer to listen to your content. What's better, you can use that link for any of the books mentioned in this video. Number 2. No Strategy we were never the business plan type of entrepreneurs, but we always understood what the plan for our business was. You need to know where you're going and what steps you need to take. If I do this, then I can do that, and then we can expand into this. It's all a chain process. Everybody calls it strategy, and without it, any business is doomed to fail. Your strategy is what allows you to deal with the market, with how you behave in times of prosperity and in times of crisis. It's the foundation of all your decisions, and it allows you to keep track of how well you're performing. The most popular book on strategy is Good to Great by Jim Collins. Don't worry, though. We'll link to everything in the description. Number 3. A Poor Understanding of Market Needs one of the simplest things to do that leads companies to failure is they ignore the customer. This might sound counterintuitive, but you'd be shocked at how widespread this issue is. Listening to your customer is an invaluable practice that allows any company to mature, learn, and adapt. Customers are constantly offering feedback and suggesting what they would need in order to better fulfill their needs. Always keep the customer in mind, and based on this problem, you can generate valuable products. 
Probably the most interesting story on the topic is the one about how Starbucks almost collapsed by assuming what their customers wanted and not focusing on what they do best. You can hear the story from the man himself, Howard Schultz, in his book Onward. Or if you're thinking about how customers feel, read The Starbucks Experience. Five Principles for Turning Ordinary into Extraordinary by Joseph Michelli. Number 4. Wrong Partners Partnerships are always difficult, especially when the founders complement each other but grow to have different drives and priorities. As humans, we are complex beings. Our desires and focus shifts as time goes on, influenced by an array of variables. Imagine being a year into a project and finding out your partner no longer feels the fire you do about this business, or they simply have a different idea of what the business should look like. You both go your separate ways and both your likelihood of success goes down the drain. That's the mildest of outcomes. Talk to any venture capitalist in Silicon Valley and they'll tell you crazy stories about founders stabbing each other in the back in order to take the upper hand. Even the most famous companies have similar stories. The founders of Snapchat kicked out the third co-founder when the business started doing well. The entire case ended up in a $157 million settlement. It's hard to go it alone, but if you can, we definitely recommend it. Number 5. A Lack of Business Acumen to be honest, some people have more of a sense for business than others, the same way some people are better at drawing or writing poetry. Business is basically math you do for profit. This is also one of the reasons most people go broke or end up becoming poor. They're bad at business where the business is yourself. Understanding how much it costs to run a business, how much each employee needs to generate in order to sustain their own job position. All of that leads into how much you price your products or services. The more businesses you study and understand, the better you'll be able to connect the dots and take advantage of opportunities coming your way. The good news is, you can easily develop your business skills if you choose to. A couple of years ago, we read The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. It's a book on why most businesses don't work and what to do about it. In it, there are great lessons about why some people find it difficult to switch from being an employee to running a business. We recommend this book to anyone who's just now starting their first business. Number 6. A Lack of Vision Most companies that survive have a long-term vision. They know where they're headed and what they're looking to become. This vision is brought on by the early team, and it's used as the North Star for the business's journey. Most people get this wrong, despite it sounding simple. They all think world domination or being the most profitable company in the world, but these are macro measurements. Instead of spewing out one number and running with it, work a little bit backwards from it. What does it mean to be a billion dollar company? How many customers do we need? How much product do I need to sell? How many employees will it take? What kind of infrastructure will be in place? How many geographies? How big am I today? What is a realistic growth rate we can achieve to close in on our North Star? Once you start digging in a little bit, the vision gets clearer and clearer. For this point, we'll recommend an already classic, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. If you and your employees don't understand the reason why the vision was put in place, you're unlikely to make it. Number 7. Micromanaging a one-person business doesn't make you a boss. You're the only employee of a company you just formed. Basically, you're still an employee, but now you've got way more things to take care of and you'll be paid a lot less. Eventually, you'll bring the first person in. The biggest temptation you'll face when hiring your first employee will be to micromanage everything he or she does. You've been accustomed to doing things a certain way and paying the most attention to detail as possible. Here's some brutal truth almost nobody cares to admit. None of your employees will work as hard or care as much about the business as you do, and that's just a fact. 
The goal here is to train your employees in a way that they can improve themselves in time. Set the guidelines, point them to your North Star and give them the freedom to not feel like machines in an assembly line. Unless, of course, you're running a literal assembly line and you can't afford robots. Number 8. Not Hiring the Right People Finding the right people is almost a form of art. You need to have a certain flair for it. A valuable employee will help you to grow a business. A couple of them could help you navigate even the most dangerous waters. But to keep this boat metaphor afloat, a bad employee is like having a hole in your hull. It doesn't matter how hard you're rowing, you're still gonna drown. So, how do you find the right employees? There are a bunch of books out there talking about how to prospect, create systems for hire, vetting processes, and more. Most of these books are aimed at large corporations with hundreds of thousands of employees, so they're probably not the right recommendation for you. So we looked at our own situation and asked our entrepreneurial friends about the hiring process, and we came around to a golden rule that seems to apply to all of our businesses, and that is hire people that are smart enough to know when they don't know something, and who have the ability to learn, that want to go on a long journey with you. That's basically the gist of it. You want people who understand what you're asking them to do, not just repeat the same process. These people will earn more because they're able to provide you with additional value by saving you time instead of constantly needing to be handheld. One thing we want you to remember that's incredibly valuable. Employees cannot read your mind. You cannot hold someone accountable for something you didn't take action to train and correct. Number 9. A Lack of Capital If we were to ask most of you what is the main reason why you don't have a business, probably the majority of you would have said a lack of money. It's understandable to some degree that you believe you need large amounts of money in order to start a business, but really that's just an excuse lazy people push forward in order to justify their lack of effort. Money is never an issue when you have time and skill, because you can always trade in that combination to earn more money and then deploy it in your business. Most wannabe entrepreneurs fantasize about somebody coming up to them and giving them a large sum of money for them to play around with. You might even be one of them yourself. The truth is, it's easy to make more money when you already have money. The true differentiator from the real and the pretenders is to make money when you don't have any. Lack of capital is never the main reason why businesses fail. It's usually poor management of existing resources. The idea is bad, the implementation is bad, and so on. We were looking to recommend a book or resource for this one, but to be honest, the best recommendation is to cut down on some of your sleeping hours and figure out how to obtain necessary capital by working projects or side gigs while you're building your business. This would be a very short commitment to get that initial ball rolling, and then it's up to you to manage those funds. Number 10. Scaling Too Fast We talked about not having money. Now let's talk about having too much money on your hands. This is why large startups fail. Here's a story. Let me know if it sounds familiar. Company X raises large amounts of money. They celebrate and they start hiring a bunch of people. They were not turning a profit, but had a long-term vision in the same way that Google did. They even get some media coverage and people speculate they might be onto something. Investors are interested but are suspicious about the team, the product, and their lack of revenue. Crazy numbers are thrown around the company's valuation. Three years later, you hear the company is closing down, filing for bankruptcy and laying off hundreds of employees. For every Google or Amazon that made it, there are thousands of companies that died trying to do the same thing, only they didn't have the chops to grow sustainably. Instead, they put too much gas on the fire until the entire place burnt down. 
Not every business is meant to be a large multinational one with thousands of employees. In fact, the more people there are to manage, the higher the chance that things will spin out of control. The smart trend in business is staying as small as possible. This gives companies the ability to adapt and reinvent themselves quickly. Scaling up too fast might be the end of your enterprise. One of the best books of 2019 is focused on exactly this topic. It's called The Company of One by Paul Jarvis. It's perfect for young entrepreneurs or freelancers looking to grow into a company. Signing up at alux.com slash freebook not only will get you an audiobook for free, but you can get this one as a free edition. Number 11. Not Adapting Quick Enough Speaking of your ability to remain nimble and adapt quickly, if you're unable to read what's happening with your business, to understand how things are going, and more importantly, where things are going in the industry you're in, you might be left behind. Some people just don't see the changes coming, and that's how you end up with the blockbusters of the world. Never before in the history of commerce did we have this fast of a pace when it comes to innovation and shifts in customer behaviors. Individuals no longer have a single career their entire lives. Instead, they need to reinvent themselves constantly. The same thing happens with companies. Google started as a search engine, then became an advertising company, then a technology company that's pushing out smartphones and tablets. Apple started out as a computer assembler, shifted to the iPod, then the iPhone. Now it's generating a large portion of its revenue from dongles and accessories to its product line. It's investing massively into media content to compete with the likes of Netflix, and next year they're supposedly releasing their own electric car. And these are mammoth companies. They're not as agile as you can be. Start being open to reinventing your business, otherwise you might get crushed. Number 12. The Inability to Sell Cash flow is the oxygen of any company. As long as you have money coming in, you're alive. The problem most first-time entrepreneurs have is they think if they build it, people will come rushing over to purchase what they're offering. The reality hits you like a brick in the face once you realize nobody cares what you've built, even if it can help them. Everyone is bombarded by people wanting to take their money from them in one way or another, and you're just another one of the crowd. Selling is the art of telling compelling stories that simplify the benefits your products or services will have in someone's life. The better you are at telling stories, the more oxygen you can feed into your business and the longer you'll stay alive. In terms of marketing, we recommend Seth Godin's books. For sales, there are a bunch of them. Number 13. Trying to do too many things at once. It's super easy to get distracted by all the shiny opportunities around you when you have an entrepreneurial mind. We're going to be a software company, but we'll also do hardware, and merchandising, and licensing, and SEO, and pay-per-click, and social media marketing, and stop. Find one thing that works for you and get really, really good at it. Once you've hit a growth ceiling in that regard, you can slowly branch out to what makes sense for your business. This is a constant problem for most companies, and it leads to the dilution of the vision. We actually had to deal with this as well when we were growing, and it took us taking a step back and looking at the company objectively. If you try to do too many things at once, you're neglecting what's actually important, and it's hurting your chances of success. A great resource on this topic is a book called The One Thing. It helps you focus your actions to achieve extraordinary results in a particular field. Number 14. Failure to use the resources at hand Believe it or not, most businesses fail because the entrepreneur is too lazy to learn how to make the most out of the available resources. The internet has democratized opportunity and the access to valuable information. You can no longer say that information is reserved for the elite or a select group. You're watching this video right now, aren't you? Learning the lessons of some of the biggest companies in the world. A book 
costs $20 to $30, and you get to learn from some of the greatest minds to ever live. Or you can even get it for free if you're that strapped for cash. We love Greta Van Riel's example of starting $5 million plus companies, one after the other, just by using Shopify and Instagram. Not many of you know this, but Shopify has this incredible library of free content with strategies, interviews, and trainings of how to leverage the internet to build a business. You can access it if you go to alux.com slash Shopify Academy. There's nothing to buy on that page, so just go and enjoy the free value you didn't know about before now. Number 15. A Lack of Passion for the Business the last thing on our list is passion for what you're doing. You have to love it. That's why people always say, don't do it for the money. If you don't love it, if you're not obsessed with it, you're gonna fail. Times will get hard. Problems will arise. You'll want to quit a million times. If you don't love it, if you don't have the passion for it, you will quit. Any reasonable person would quit. Why would anyone put up with all the bullshit that's coming their way unless they loved it to the bone? Entrepreneurs look at things differently. They get involved with their business because they actually care about the product, about what they are building, and the problems they are solving. Be careful of everything we've mentioned on this list, because you only need one hole in your boat for it to sink, not to mention all 15. Just to make sure you remember them all, here's a quick recap of our 15 reasons why most businesses fail and how to avoid them. We began with the importance of having a competitive advantage if you want to compete, followed by how important it is to develop a strategy. Failure can also come from not understanding what your market actually needs or partnering up with someone who doesn't want to go the long run with you. You need to smarten up in terms of business, develop a long-term vision, figure out how to not micromanage every single decision by hiring the right kind of people. You can fail if you don't have enough money to keep the lights on or fail because you spend too much money too quickly. If you're not adapting quickly enough, you'll not be able to keep your business going by generating sales. Or if you're simply not focusing on what's important, your doors will soon close. You have so many resources available to you that failure to use them is just another form of self-sabotage. Lastly, never go into a business you're not passionate about. Any decent human being would quit when things get hard if they're not really passionate. Now, Alexers, we really hope this video helped to expose some of the vulnerabilities in your own projects, and hopefully you'll take the necessary steps to improve your odds of success. It would be really valuable if you could share in the comments one of the difficulties you've encountered in your business. There's a lot of hidden value that comes from our community who's got extensive experience with situations like yours. Share your struggles with the community and we're sure they'll provide some valuable insights. Oh, you're still here, are you? Well, after all this time, you're still watching these videos until the end, and that makes you a true Aluxer. Of course, we're going to do the bonus fact for you. Number 16. You're too scared. Over 95% of businesses fail, not because any of the valid reasons we listed here, but because people were too scared to take the leap. Fear is what is stopping most people from starting a business. The fear of embarrassment, that people will laugh at their dreams, the fear of not knowing enough, the fear of insecurity, the fear of not being good enough. Who in their right mind would quit a solid, secure, high-paying job to go struggle for a dream that may never come true? But you know how you can be 100% certain it will not happen for you? by staying there, by not taking that leap. You need to take the leap. The person who doesn't jump will never know what it feels like to fly. We'd like to end this video with one of our favorite quotes. Birds born in a cage think flying is an illness. Take today and think about that, and hopefully starting tomorrow, you'll be spreading your wings.
If you're ready to break free from your cage, please write free in the comments so we know who's brave and serious about this journey. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.